First, I want to see if there's any white bass up here. They tend to congregate in this corner, right below the cable against the north bank. They come over the floodgates. Seems like they stay here for a little bit all along this bank, probably in this slower water. And eventually go on down the lake. And they usually bite like crazy. Only gonna take two or three casts. No bites, no whites. I came through a lot of midges coming, <laughs> driving up here. A bunch. I don't think there's anything interested in this corner. One more cast. I'm going to get out in the current. the current here and drift on down. I just uh, looking at a thread fin shad on the surface right now. So they're still coming through. Not very many, but no telling how many are underneath the surface. So I'm probably not going to stay up here very long. These fish up, up here have seen a lot of shad and they've eaten a lot of shad and they're full of shad and they're probably not going to bite too good probably going to have to go down a little ways Yeah, there was a bump. Sure is pretty. It's really pretty out. It's a pretty shot downstream. I'll take a picture of that. There's one. 
Yeah, he's not very big. Take a picture. Oh, I'm finding a fish. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Okay. Ain't not bad. 14, 15, maybe. 14. Solid. No belly, though. Well, a little belly. Hold still. Sweet. One just hit the surface over there real hard, probably ate a shad. And there's another one. See, I'm getting down a little bit away from the dam, so we're starting a little, a little bit more active. I just did one cast and I talked about all the conditions and I probably should talk about the conditions now since this is kind of a standalone video. They have been running <coughs> these four floodgates. They're open one foot. They're open one foot each, dumping around 4,000 CFS, which is equal to one unit. We have four units in our dam. And uh, we have, you know, I don't know for sure. I'm not really privy to information there at the core, but my understanding is they were going to do this for 24 hours on Monday. Um, they needed to run the equivalent of three units because of Table Rock being a little bit high. Not bad. Woo, I got I got hit with a shad out of his mouth. Um, so instead of running three units, one two of the units being down, they're running uh, the equivalent of one unit over the top and two units. But the strange thing yesterday and today, today being April 6th, um, for about, ooh, a little heavier. For about six, seven hours today, they shut one unit down, so they're only running one unit, four gates. He's not as big as I thought he was. He's just heavy. Oh gosh, he is fat now. Woo, he's been eating. Yes, that's what we like to see. So they're running one unit. Four gates, which never happened before. Actually two units and four gates, never happened before. They have ran flood, flood gates and three units while one's been down, but never, never two. So, and we don't have a lot of rain forecasts in the next uh, seven days as far as big storms that are going to come sit on us or anything. So, so we we're getting all this thread fin shad coming over the top through the floodgates. And these, sh and these trout have been just gorging themselves all week. And now I'm using a 3 32nd ounce white jig. I'm up here all by myself, and I'm having a blast.
I've gotten down away from the, the dam about well, about a half mile now, three, three quarters of a mile. And uh, these fish are still hungry. I just missed another one. There's no wind at all. Uh, we got a pretty good rain today. Or not a pretty good rain. We had a nice rain today. So 330, 32nd ounce is perfect. Actually a 16th would probably work. Because I really don't want it sinking real fast. I just want it just kind of drifting down. Because these shad are but we saw a bunch of live shad swimming in schools in this area on Tuesday. He's so fat he can't swim. Uh, but a lot of the shad are stunned and or dead. And um, so they're just kind of drifting down and fluttering a little bit. And that's what you want to make your jig or your spoon look like. Just a shad that's kind of helpless. And if you don't know what one cast is, uh, Google Lily's Landing one cast. It doesn't make any difference how you spell Lily, because it's the only one. And it's a daily video that we do here on Tani Como. A daily video. We, we don't miss days. Been doing it for four years. We'll tell you what the water's doing. Try to tell you what the fish are doing. We do different techniques, mainly throwing jigs. Marabou jigs. It's a lot of fun for us doing it. Oh, I just missed another one. And uh, we get we get a lot of really neat stories where people say they watch it every day and. Uh, some people that are shut-ins or people that can't fish anymore or we get a lot of overseas people in Afghanistan, Iraq, other places that watch it that are in the military and that's probably the coolest part. Like I said, I'm using four pound line. The rod I'm using right now, it's a seven foot rod that was made by a gentleman in Kansas City. It's called the Trout, the Trout, no, I'm sorry, the Rod Shop. It's a seven foot one piece that we used to sell in the shop, but this is the last one that I have. But we use, uh, mainly we use six foot, one piece rods that we, Lily's Landing, have made, manufacture in Harrison, Arkansas. They're kind of a medium light. They're what we consider perfect for throwing marabou jigs. And we th we'll throw as small as a 132nd ounce jig with two pound line and the heaviest jig that we throw is an eighth ounce four pound line and we use uh, Fluger Presidents reels uh, the 6725s 
67, 69, 60, 69, 25. It's starting to look a little foggy. After rain, our water is uh, 43 degrees right at the moment. As you can see, that's what I get to drive home in tonight. Um, after we get a rain and the air gets a little moist, the air on the lake condenses and we get fog and on humid days in the summer which most of our days are humid this is what we have to look forward to all summer long morning and evening fog some people think it's really pretty those of us that have to deal with it do not and I'm just about done because I want to I'm gonna have to take it slow going home. I just missed one. Let's see, I'm on the wrong side, sorry. <laughs> I turned the boat around, but I didn't switch sides. It is, you have a, a really a difference between the water coming through the turbines, which this is a really a clear water over here the water over here has got a little color to it, a little stain and um, the water coming over the top is about 47 48 degrees and the water coming through the turbines 43 and they're still kind of separated even down this far um, believe it or not trout really don't like 43 degree water. They prefer 47. So they're probably going to be over there. But one more cast, I'm going to head in. But these, uh, these shad runs, these are what we, this is what we live for. The people who live here, even the guides down here, they just love these shad in the, summer, in the spring and springtime when the, usually we have spring rains that they have to open floodgates. You know, the lakes get high and they have to do emergency releases. This is just a mandatory release when the water gets a foot or two high. Did I say last cast? This is last cast. So this is pretty cool. And these fish, even though after they shut the gates and they don't see shad for a while, They'll start hit. They'll keep hitting white. They'll. They've got pretty good memories. Week or two or three, maybe. Woo. And uh, now here is a good fighting fish. I like when they fight like this. If it's white spoons, anything looks like a thread threadfin shad. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to get him up. they break my rod. He's got the line wrapped around his jaw. Come on, buddy. You're loose. You're loose. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm done. I got a long ride home. About three and a half miles through fog. It's going to take a while. I hope you learned something. That's, that's what I want to do this for.